Warning, this story contains extreme violence, slasher elements, and murder. I encourage you to listen to the entire story, and if you enjoy this type of content, please subscribe and press the bell icon to stay updated. The light fades from my eyes as I come to in an unfamiliar place, my wrists and ankles shackled. The air is thick with the scent of rust and decay. I try to move, but the chains clink softly, reminding me of my predicament. Around me, the room is bathed in a sickly yellow light, casting long, menacing shadows that dance on the walls, I hear a faint, eerie giggle. It's the kind of laugh that chills you to the bone, like nails on a chalkboard. I look up and see him, the clown. His grotesque face is painted with a garish smile, but his eyes. His eyes are the coldest I've ever seen. He's dressed in a tattered, colorful suit, and his oversized shoes clomp around as he approaches. The sound of his laughter seems to come from nowhere and everywhere all at once. Welcome to my playground, he says with an exaggerated bow. His voice is disturbingly cheerful. You'll find it's quite entertaining. He gestures around the room, and I notice for the first time that we're in what looks like a twisted carnival. The floor is covered with a thick layer of dust, but it's the attractions that catch my eye. There are swings made of barbed wire, slides lined with razor-sharp blades, and a carousel with horses that look more like nightmarish beasts, the clown's laughter echoes as he steps back, giving me space to take in the full horror of my situation. I hear the clinking of chains and distant cries of agony. I'm not alone here, others must be trapped too. The realization sends a cold shiver down my spine, you've got a chance, the clown announces, his voice dripping with malice. Survive the playground, and you'll get to leave. Fail, and. Well, let's just say the playground gets an upgrade. The chains holding me retract, and I'm left standing on my own. I'm terrified, but I know I need to move. I glance at a door at the far end of the room, a potential exit. But I can't be sure it's real or shifts, and I'm forced to jump to avoid a series of razor-sharp blades that spring from the floor. My heart races as I navigate through the deadly obstacles, each one more horrifying than the last. Every sound, every movement is a potential death trap. The clown's laughter follows me, echoing in my ears, making every step a mental battle, I come across another contestant, a young woman who looks as terrified as I feel. She's attempting to cross a bridge made of thin planks that sway precariously over a pit filled with spikes. We exchange a glance, a brief moment of solidarity in our shared nightmare. But as she takes a step, one of the planks snaps. And she falls screaming into the abyss, the clown's laughter is almost joyous. One less to worry about, he says, clapping his hands. Remember, only the strong survive. I press on, determined to make it through. My hands are slick with sweat, and my legs are shaking from fear and exhaustion. Every corner holds a new horror, every step is fraught with danger. But I'm driven by a singular thought, escape, eventually, I reach what appears to be the final challenge, a massive, twisted maze. The walls are lined with spikes, and the floor is littered with traps. The exit is visible at the end, but it seems impossibly far away. I hear the clown's voice one last time, his tone mocking and cruel. Good luck, my little survivor. Let's see if you can make it out. I'll be watching. With the clown's words echoing in my mind, I push forward into the maze. Every turn is a gamble, every step a test of nerve. I barely escape a series of deadly traps and finally see the light of the exit, but as I reach the door, I find it's locked. The clown's laughter fills the space, and I realize too late that the true horror of the playground was never the traps or the obstacles, it was the false hope. I am not escaping. Snare, to strip away hope and leave me in eternal despair, I turn to face the clown, 
who is now standing in the doorway, his smile wider than ever. You made it far, he says, his voice dripping with satisfaction. But there's always a price. As he steps forward, I understand the final, horrifying truth. The playground wasn't meant for survival. It was meant to break us. And as I prepare for whatever comes next, I know that the playground will claim me, just as it claimed so many before. The clown's laughter is the last thing I hear before everything fades to black, the darkness fades into a sudden, blinding light. I jolt awake with a sharp intake of breath. The metallic tang of blood filling my nose. I'm back in the room, the starting point. My heart hammers against my ribs, my breathing ragged as the reality sets in, I'm still alive, the room around me seems even more sinister than before. The walls, once yellow and grimy, are now smeared with fresh blood. I stagger to my feet, swaying from exhaustion, trying to piece together what just happened. Did I die? Did he? Reset me? There's no time to think. The clown's mocking laughter crackles through hidden speakers, filling the room with its suffocating presence. Round two, my little plaything, the clown shrieks, his voice gleeful and manic. You thought it was over. The fun's only just begun. His words claw at my sanity. I want to scream, to lash out, but I know that won't help me survive what comes next. The room shudders, and the floor splits open in front of me. A steel platform rises, bringing with it the dismembered bodies of those who failed. The sight makes bile rise in my throat. Limbs dangle lifelessly, and the metallic scent of death fills the air, thick and nauseating. My eyes dart to the far side of the room, where a door creaks open slowly, revealing the next part of the playground. My chance to escape. No, played alive their expressions frozen in silent screams. I keep moving, each step more reluctant than the last, until I hear the sharp crack of bone from somewhere up ahead. I freeze, keep moving. The clown's voice snarls, reverberating through the hall. Or I'll come down there myself and make you, I can't bear the thought of him touching me, of those gnarled hands grabbing my throat, squeezing until my eyes bulge from my skull. I sprint forward, the corridor curving into a room filled with twisted, broken mirrors. A maze of reflections, I step cautiously into the room. Catching glimpses of myself, ragged, bloody, eyes wide with terror. It's a cruel joke, these mirrors, forcing me to confront my fear and despair. And then I see it, a glint of steel. Movement. I whip around just in time as a trapdoor in the ceiling opens. A steel blade swings down, narrowly missing my face. It whooshes past, slicing through the air, and embeds itself into the floor with a sickening thunk. I don't have time to recover before the walls start moving. Closing in, panic surges through me. I thrash against the narrowing space, feeling the edges of the mirrors cutting into my skin. My reflection mocks me from every angle, a helpless rat in a cage. I grit my teeth, feeling the warmth of blood trickling down my arms and legs. The pain is real, grounding, and I cling to it, forcing myself to think. Where is the exit? The clown's laughter intensifies, echoing off the mirrored walls. I glance wildly around, noticing a panel on the far side that's different, its surface matte not reflective. I lunge toward it, slashing through the closing walls, my breath coming in gasps. I press against the panel, praying for a way out, and suddenly the floor drops beneath me. I plummet into darkness, my scream catching in my throat as I land hard on- I'm in some kind of pit, filled with bodies in varying stages of decomposition. I've landed on a mound of corpses, the weight of it all crashes over me. I scramble up, gagging, trying to find solid ground. My hands sink into the flesh of the dead, and I bite down a scream, forcing myself to move forward. 
The pit is dark, save for a faint red glow in the distance. Another way out. Or another nightmare, I crawl toward the light, each movement a struggle as limbs and rotting flesh slip and squelch under me. The clown's voice sings songs above me, getting dirty down there, aren't we? Such a messy little survivor. I grit my teeth and push forward. Pulling myself out of the pit and into a narrow tunnel. I collapse on the floor, slick with blood and grime, heaving for breath. In the faint glow, I spot metal bars embedded into the walls, blades, ready to spring at any moment, click. A sound, subtle yet unmistakable, echoes in the tunnel. I look up and see it, a cage-like contraption rolling toward me on the ceiling, its spikes dripping with what looks like. Acid, I scramble to my feet, sprinting through the tunnel as the cage hurtles down behind me, spraying the floor with sizzling acid. The air fills with the acrid stench of burning metal and flesh, and I scream, feeling a hot droplet sear into my shoulder. The pain is blinding. But I don't stop. I can't stop. The tunnel twists and turns, narrowing until I'm practically clawing my way through. The metal scrapes against my skin, and the acid burns are relentless. Finally, I burst through an opening and collapse onto the floor of a new room, gasping for air, I look up and see him. The clown. He's standing in the center of the room, holding a gleaming knife in his gloved hand. His eyes glitter with sadistic glee as he tilts his head, studying me. Almost there, he whispers, his voice dripping with faux encouragement. You're doing so well. Pumping through my veins. I know what's coming. One last test, the clown steps back, revealing a door behind him. A door painted bright red. My heart skips a beat. Go ahead, he purrs. It's your escape. If you can make it past me. I feel the weight of the knife in his hand, see the gleam of hunger in his eyes. He's not just a spectator anymore. He's part of the game now. I clench my fists, adrenaline surging through me, and charge, the room becomes a whirlwind of violence. The clown lunges, and I duck, feeling the blade graze my shoulder. I crash into him, the impact sending us both sprawling. His laughter rises, maniacal and unhinged. Yes. Yes. Fight for it. Fight. I grab a shard of glass from the floor, the mirror mazes remnants, and slash at his face. He jerks back, cackling as blood seeps through his garish makeup. His smile widens, showing teeth stained yellow and red, he lunges again, faster this time, his blade aiming for my throat. I twist, barely avoiding the blow, and slam the glass into his arm. He howls, wrenching back, but I press forward. It's me or him. It's survival, I grab his arm, twisting the knife from his grip, and drive it into his chest. His laughter gurgles, turning into a wet cough as blood spills from his mouth. I pull back, panting, staring into his eyes. They gleam with twisted joy, even as the life fades from them. He collapses, his body convulsing, and I watch, my heart pounding, my body trembling. The door looms ahead. The exit, I stumble toward it, each step a battle against the pain and exhaustion. My hand reaches the doorknob. I twist it, half expecting it to be another trick, another nightmare, but it opens. A blinding light engulfs me as I step through, falling to my knees on the other side. I look back, expecting to see the clown's twisted playground, but there's nothing. Just emptiness, I laugh, a broken, hysterical sound that bubbles up from deep inside. The clown's voice, barely a whisper, brushes against my ear, round three. Is coming. I stumble forward, collapsing onto a dirt floor. My muscles scream in agony, my skin slick with sweat and blood. 
The bright light from the door fades, leaving me in a suffocating darkness. My breaths come in shallow, panicked gasps, each inhalation scraping against the rawness of my throat. I survived. But the clown's final words still echo in my head, round three. Is coming. I drag myself to my feet, every part of me burning with pain. The room is eerily silent, a vast emptiness that stretches out into shadows. I can't make out the walls or the ceiling. For a moment, I let myself hope that it's over, that I've escaped his nightmare, then, a flickering light appears in the distance, illuminating a new scene. My stomach twists into knots as the reality sets in, I'm not free. I'm still in the playground, the light grows, revealing a carnival setup that sprawls out before me like some twisted, hellish version of an amusement park. A rusted ferris wheel creaks in the distance, its seats hanging precariously by frayed cables. To my left, a dilapidated carousel spins slowly, its horses replaced by grotesque, faceless mannequins. I hear faint whispers, the cries of past victims drifting through the air like a haunting lullaby. My blood turns cold. I'm in his domain once more, welcome back. The clown's voice blares from everywhere and nowhere. The sound of it scrapes against my nerves, fraying them further. You didn't think it was that easy, did you? I bite back a scream. There's no point in giving him the satisfaction of seeing my fear. I have to focus, to find a way out. There has to be a way out, ahead, I spot a dimly lit path leading deeper into the playground. I force myself to move. The clown's voice, barely a whisper, brushes against my ear, round three. Is coming. I stumble forward, collapsing onto a dirt floor. My muscles scream in agony, my skin slick with sweat and blood. The bright light from the door fades, leaving me in a suffocating darkness. My breaths come in shallow, panicked gasps, each inhalation scraping against the rawness of my throat. I survived. But the clown's final words still echo in my head, round three. Is coming. I drag myself to my feet, every part of me burning with pain. The room is eerily silent, a vast emptiness that stretches out into shadows. I can't make out the walls or the ceiling. For a moment, I let myself hope that it's over, that I've escaped his nightmare, then, a flickering light appears in the distance, illuminating a new scene. My stomach twists into knots as the reality sets in, I'm not free. I'm still in the playground, the light grows, revealing a carnival setup that sprawls out before me like some twisted, hellish version of an amusement park. A rusted ferris wheel creaks in the distance, its seats hanging precariously by frayed cables. To my left, a dilapidated carousel spins slowly, its horses replaced by grotesque, faceless mannequins. I hear faint whispers, the cries of past victims drifting through the air like a haunting lullaby. My blood turns cold. I'm in his domain once more, welcome back. The clown's voice blares from everywhere and nowhere. The sound of it scrapes against my nerves, fraying them further. You didn't think it was that easy, did you? I bite back a scream. There's no point in giving him the satisfaction of seeing my fear. I have to focus, to find a way out. There has to be a way out, ahead, I spot a dimly lit path leading deeper into the playground. I force myself to move, my legs head at their coming for me. I rush to the far side of the room, searching desperately for a way out, but the walls are seamless, offering no escape, the chains rattle, getting closer. I grab one of them, trying to push it away, but it swings back, slashing across my arm and tearing open the skin. I scream, clutching the wound, my blood pouring out in a hot, sticky stream. The metallic scent fills the air, mingling with the grime and rot around me, come on. I shout, my voice raw with terror and rage. Is this all you've got? 
The clown's laughter fills the room, a maddening cacophony. Oh, my dear, you haven't seen anything yet. The chains close in. And I fight against them, my body a flurry of frantic movements. I manage to grab one of the hooks, yanking it free and swinging it toward another, sending sparks flying as metal clashes against metal. I thrash, feeling the sting of cuts as hooks graze my skin, but I refuse to stop. I have to survive, finally, I spot a panel in the wall, a scene that wasn't visible before. I lunge at it, prying my fingers into the gap and pulling with all my strength. The panel gives way, revealing a narrow passage. I throw myself into it, tumbling through the dark, leaving the chains rattling furiously behind. I crawl through the passage, my entire body screaming in pain. The air is thick and suffocating. Smelling of rot and death. I emerge into another room, this one small and dimly lit. In the center stands a large wheel, like something you'd find in a game show. Its surface is divided into sections, each one labeled with words like limb, eye, tongue, freedom. The clown materializes beside the wheel, his face split into that grotesque smile. It's simple, he croons. Give it a spin. You might get lucky. Or you might not. I stare at him, my heart pounding. The wheel gleams in the dim light, each section a promise of agony. I could hand trembles as I reach for the wheel. The clown watches with gleeful anticipation, his eyes glinting. I take a deep breath and spin the wheel, watching it whirl around, the clacking sound filling the air like a countdown to my fate, it slows, inching toward a section. My stomach twists, and I clench my teeth. The wheel finally stops on limb. The clown's laughter rings out, shrill and triumphant. A sacrifice, then. Which limb shall it be, hmm? I collapse to my knees, a sob escaping my throat. I glance around the room, desperate for something, anything, that could help me. Then I see it, a small hatchet hanging on the wall. I crawl toward it, my movements sluggish and mechanical, my mind numb with terror, I grab the hatchet, gripping its handle so tightly my knuckles turn white. I lift it, my arm shaking, and position it over my left forearm. Tears blur my vision, my breath coming in ragged gasps. I have no choice. I have to play, with a scream, I swing the hatchet down. The pain explodes through me, a blinding, searing agony that drowns out everything else. I collapse, clutching my severed limb, blood pouring out in thick, hot spurts. My vision darkens at the edges, and I fight to stay conscious, to hold on to the sliver of hope that I can make it through this. The clown claps his hands, a grotesque expression of delight on his painted face. Bravo! Such determination. You're nearly there, my dear. The room spins around me, the pain threatening to drag me into unconsciousness. But I force myself to my feet, staggering toward the only door in the room. I push it open and step into the blinding light beyond, the clown's voice echoes one last time, a whisper that chills me to the bone. See you in the final round. I collapse onto the ground, my blood pooling around me. The light fades, and dark wallowing my consciousness in its dark embrace. My mind swims through a haze of pain and terror, Fragments of the nightmare replaying behind my eyelids, the chains, the wheel, the hatchet. My severed arm pulses with excruciating agony, and every beat of my heart sends a fresh wave of nausea crashing through me. I'm not sure how long I drift in this limbo, teetering on the brink of consciousness, but suddenly, I hear it, the clown's laughter, faint at first, then growing louder, drilling into my skull, my eyes snap open. I'm in a new room, a small space drenched in a sickly yellow light. The walls are smeared with crimson handprints, and a rancid stench fills the air, rotting meat. Sour sweat, and the unmistakable odor of iron-rich blood. 
I gag, the taste of bile rising in my throat, and try to sit up. My left arm is a mangled stump, crudely wrapped in what looks like a strip torn from my shirt. The sight makes me want to scream, but I hold it in. There's no room for weakness here, welcome back to the land of the living. The clown's voice booms through hidden speakers, his tone dripping with gleeful malice. You've made it so far, my little plaything. But now, it's time for the final round. I forced myself to stand, swaying on my feet. I'm lightheaded, weak from blood loss, but I refuse to collapse. I'm still alive, and that means I still have a chance. I scan the room, looking for an exit. There's a single door on the far wall, covered in thick chains. My stomach twists. There's no way it's going to be that simple, look up, the clown hisses, his voice now a whisper that slithers into my ears. I do, and my heart skips a beat. The ceiling is lined with blades, rusted, serrated edges hanging precariously from chains, ready to drop at any moment. The clown giggles. This is your last test. Get to the door, and you're free. But watch your step. One wrong move, and those cuts through my fog of fear. I need to move, but carefully. My eyes lock onto the floor, searching for anything unusual. There are tiles, unevenly spaced, some with faint stains of brown, blood. Pressure plates. It's a trap designed to maim, to kill. One misstep, and I'm done, I take a deep breath, clenching my jaw against the pain radiating from my arm, and step forward. I place my foot on a tile that looks slightly less stained than the others. Nothing happens. I let out a shaky exhale, then inch forward, placing my weight onto the next tile. Still nothing, tick-tock, the clown sings. Time's running out. I ignore him, focusing on the floor. With each step, I test the tiles, feeling the subtle give underfoot. The room is silent except for the pounding of my heart and the faint, maddening drip of blood from my wound. I'm halfway across when a sudden click echoes beneath me. My blood runs cold, move. My mind screams, and I hurl myself forward, just as a blade crashes down behind me, slamming into the ground with a deafening clang. The force of its descent sends a gust of air past my face, and I feel a thin line of warmth spread across my cheek. It nicked me. Too close, careful now, the clown chuckles. We wouldn't want you to lose your head before the grand finale. I scramble to my feet, my breaths coming in short. Sharp bursts. The door is only a few steps away, but the tiles between me and freedom are a minefield. I move slowly, testing each one, the air around me thick with tension. Sweat drips into my eyes, stinging, blurring my vision. I blink it away, concentrating on the door. Finally, I reach it. My hand shakes as I grip the doorknob. It's ice cold, sending a shiver up my spine. I glance back at the room, half expecting the clown to materialize from the shadows, to yank me back into the hellscape. But he doesn't. It's hanging from exposed wires. My heartbeat hammers in my ears as I stumble forward. The corridor seems to stretch on forever, a never-ending tunnel that twists my sense of reality. I don't know if I'm actually moving or if this is just another trick, and then, the corridor widens into a massive, circular chamber. The walls are covered with rusted metal, and chains dangle from the ceiling, each one holding a bloodied hook. In the center of the room stands a single metal chair. An electric chair, surprise. The clown's voice booms through the chamber, giddy with excitement. He materializes out of the shadows. His twisted grin stretched across his grotesque face. You've made it to the final round, my brave little rat. I back away, shaking my head. No no, I'm not playing anymore, 
I mutter, my voice hoarse. I'm done with your games. Oh, but this isn't a game, he croons, taking slow, deliberate steps toward me. This is the climax. You see, the chair is the only way out. Sit, and it's all over. Your suffering, your pain. It's the door to freedom. I stare at him, my mind whirling with confusion and fear. The chair pulses with an ominous hum, the wires trailing from it sparking with electricity. I know it's a lie. It has to be. There's no way he'll let me walk free. Not after everything. But what choice do I have? I look around the room, searching for another exit, another way out. There's nothing. Just the chair and the clown, standing there with his gleeful, mocking eyes, time's up. He snarls, his voice shifting from playful to threatening. Sit. I take a shaky step toward the chair, my legs quivering. I don't want to die. I don't want to give in. But the exhaustion, the pain. It's dragging me down. My vision swims, and I stumble, catching myself on the edge of the chair, good, the clown purrs. Just one to the chair, a series of buttons and switches. A way to fight back. Desperation fuels me. I lunge at the panel, slamming my hand down on the largest button, the room erupts in a cacophony of noise. The chains hanging from the ceiling rattle violently, and the lights flicker wildly. The clown's face twists into a snarl of rage. What have you done? I don't know what I've triggered, but I don't care. The walls begin to shake, and a siren blares, a high-pitched wail that drowns out everything else. The clown lunges at me, his hands outstretched, but I duck, grabbing one of the chains and swinging it toward him. The hook catches his shoulder, ripping through fabric and flesh. He howls in pain, a sound that echoes with fury and frustration, I turn back to the control panel and slam my hand down on every button, not knowing or caring what they do. The chair sparks violently, and the floor beneath it splits open, revealing a chasm of darkness, the clown screeches, his body convulsing as he's pulled toward the chair, his feet skidding on the ground. No. This isn't how it's supposed to end. He screams, his voice raw with rage. I watch, frozen in place, as the chair and the clown are swallowed by the chasm. His laughter morphs into a distorted wail, a horrifying blend of agony and madness. Until it finally fades into silence. The room goes dark, the only sound left is the thundering of my heart, for a moment, everything is still. Then, the walls around me begin to collapse, crumbling into dust. A shaft of light pierces through the darkness, blinding and pure. I stagger toward it, my legs barely supporting me. I stumble into the light, feeling it warm my skin, feeling air fill my lungs, I collapse on the ground, looking up at the sky, a real sky. The nightmare playground. A faint, echoing laugh that chills me to my core. The clown's laugh, see you soon. It whispers on the wind, my heart skips a beat as I lie there, staring into the sky, knowing the nightmare is far from over. He'll be back, I lie on the ground, gasping for air as my vision clears. The sky above me is a pale, unsettling gray, streaked with dark clouds that hang low like an oppressive blanket. I claw at the earth beneath me, feeling the cool dirt coat my bloodied fingers. My arm, my missing arm, throbs with a dull, persistent pain that gnaws at the edges of my sanity. But it's a welcome sensation, it tells me I'm still alive, free. The word rattles through my mind like a cruel joke. I know better than to believe it. The clown's laugh still lingers in my ears, echoing through the silence. I turn my head, half expecting to see him standing over me, that grotesque smile stretched across his painted face. But the clearing is empty. No chains, no rusted blades, no twisted funhouse. 
Just an open field dotted with patches of withered grass and skeletal trees, I push myself to my knees, my breath shallow and ragged. The world around me feels unnervingly calm, devoid of the chaos and horror that had defined the clown's playground. It's almost too quiet, like the air itself is holding its breath. I stagger to my feet, swaying for a moment as I try to get my bearings. Ahead, in the distance, I see what looks like a road. My heart leaps. A way out. I start limping toward it, every step sending jolts of pain through my body, but I grit my teeth and force myself forward. I have to keep moving. I have to get away from this place, minutes stretch into an agonizing eternity as I make my way through the barren field. The wind howls around me, carrying the scent of rot and decay. I glance over my shoulder, half expecting to see the clown lurking in the shadows, but there's nothing. Just that end, it's old and cracked, lined with weeds that claw their way up through the asphalt. I look left, then right, searching for any sign of life. A car. A house. Anything. But there's nothing. Just emptiness stretching out in both directions. My stomach knots with unease. I swallow hard, forcing down the rising panic, you're not free, I mutter to myself, the words spilling out in a choked whisper. Not yet. I take a deep breath and turn left, choosing a direction at random. I start walking, my body on autopilot, every step a struggle against the fatigue threatening to pull me under. I don't know where I'm going, and I don't care. All that matters is putting as much distance as possible between me and him. The road curves, leading into a thick, dark forest. I hesitate at the edge of the tree lean, my instinct screaming at me to stay away. The trees loom overhead, their twisted branches forming a canopy that blots out what little light remains. I glance back at the open field, at the road stretching behind me into nothingness. The forest is risky, but staying in the open makes me feel exposed. Vulnerable, I grit my teeth and step into the woods, pushing through the underbrush. The shadows close around me, and the temperature drops, the air turning damp and frigid. I move deeper, weaving through the trees, my senses on high alert. The forest is eerily silent, not a single bird sings. Not a leaf rustles. My own ragged breathing becomes the only sound, echoing through the oppressive stillness. Time loses meaning as I push forward, driven by some primal instinct to escape, to survive. My thoughts race, replaying every horror I endured in the clown's playground. The chains, the blades, the blood. His laughter. It haunts me, gnawing at the edges of my sanity. Even now, I feel his eyes on me, watching, waiting, but he's gone. I saw him fall. And cracked, lined with weeds that claw their way up through the asphalt. I look left, then right, searching for any sign of life. A car. A house. Anything. But there's nothing. Just emptiness stretching out in both directions. My stomach knots with unease. I swallow hard, forcing down the rising panic, you're not free, I mutter to myself, the words spilling out in a choked whisper. Not yet. I take a deep breath and turn left, choosing a direction at random. I start walking, my body on autopilot, every step a struggle against the fatigue threatening to pull me under. I don't know where I'm going, and I don't care. All that matters is putting as much distance as possible between me and him. The road curves, leading into a thick, dark forest. I hesitate at the edge of the tree lean, my instincts screaming at me to stay away. The trees loom overhead, their twisted branches forming a canopy that blots out what little light remains. I glance back at the open field, at the road stretching behind me into nothingness. The forest is risky, but staying in the open makes me feel exposed. Vulnerable, 
I grit my teeth and step into the woods, pushing through the underbrush. The shadows close around me, and the temperature drops, the air turning damp and frigid. I move deeper, weaving through the trees, my senses on high alert. The forest is eerily silent, not a single bird sings. Not a leaf rustles. My own ragged breathing becomes the only sound, echoing through the oppressive stillness. Time loses meaning as I push forward, driven by some primal instinct to escape, to survive. My thoughts race, replaying every horror I endured in the clown's playground. The chains, the blades, the blood. His laughter. It haunts me, gnawing at the edges of my sanity. Even now, I feel his eyes on me, watching, waiting, but he's gone. I saw him fall. I saw clearing. In the center stands a dilapidated cabin, its wooden walls warped and splintered with age. My heart skips a beat. Shelter. I limp toward it, ignoring the voice in the back of my mind that whispers, it's a trap. I push open the door, wincing at the loud creak that shatters the silence. Inside, the cabin is dark, the air thick with the stench of mildew. A faint light filters through a broken window, casting distorted shadows across the floor. I step inside, scanning the room. It's empty except for a rotting table and a single, tattered chair, I collapse onto the chair, letting out a shuddering breath. My body screams in protest. Every muscle aching, every wound throbbing with pain. I close my eyes, just for a moment, allowing myself a brief respite. You're safe. I try to convince myself, but deep down, I know it's a lie. There's no safety here. Not in this world, a faint noise snaps me back to reality. I freeze, my eyes snapping open, ears straining. It's coming from the corner of the room, a soft, almost imperceptible giggle, no, I turn my head slowly, my heart pounding in my chest. In the corner, shrouded in shadows, I see him. The clown. His white face grins at me, eyes glinting with sadistic glee. My stomach twists into a knot of terror, my mind reeling. He's here. How? How is he here? You didn't think it was over. Did you? He whispers, his voice like nails scraping against my skull. The playground never ends. Not for you. I scramble to my feet, backing away toward the door. My mind races, screaming at me to run, to get out, but my legs feel heavy, rooted to the spot. The clown steps forward, his movement slow, deliberate. He raises his hands, revealing long, sharp blades protruding from his fingertips, glistening in the dim light, playtime isn't over, he croons, his voice dripping with mockery. I break through a thicket and stumble into a small clearing. Sprinting into the forest without looking back, his laughter follows me, echoing through the trees, wrapping around me like a vice. I run blindly, branches whipping against my face, the world around me blurring into a chaotic swirl of darkness and light. My lungs burn, my legs threaten to give out, but I push forward, driven by sheer terror. Finally, I burst out of the forest, collapsing onto the road. I lie there, gasping for air, my body trembling uncontrollably. For a moment, there's silence. I stare up at the sky. My heart pounding against my ribs. Am I free? Then, a sound. The faint, rhythmic honking of a horn in the distance. My blood runs cold. I lift my head, eyes widening as a shape emerges from the horizon, a carnival wagon, its paint peeling and rusted, rolls toward me, its garish colors stark against the gray sky. The clown stands atop it, grinning down at me, his eyes gleaming with delight, no, I whisper, shaking my head. No, no, no. The wagon stops, and he jumps down, landing lightly on the road. His eyes lock onto mine, and he tilts his head, his smile widening, 
welcome back, he purrs, spreading his arms wide. The playground is always here. Waiting. I scream, scrambling to my feet and running down the road. His laughter fills the air, surrounding me, chasing me. It echoes inside my skull, growing louder and louder until it's all I can hear, I run. And run. The road stretches endlessly ahead, the sky above darkening with storm clouds. His laughter never fades, a constant reminder that this nightmare has no end, the clown's playground is forever, and I realize, with a sickening jolt of horror, that there is no escape. Not really. Because he isn't just out there. He's in here. In my mind. A part of me now and goes on, and I keep running, knowing I can't stop. Not until he decides it's over. And somehow, deep down, I know that moment will never come, because this is his playground, and I am just another toy.